Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm Angela from artori.co.uk. I just discovered this just purely by chance when I was looking for something else. It's card making magic. It's a complete A2 card and box die set, which includes 21 dies. So apparently you can make a card and a box just by using this die set. I haven't opened it yet. And this isn't the only one you can get. They have all different kinds. I'll see if I can find some more and link to them in the description. Um, how do I open this? Oh, yes. Just a second. Back in case I put this out. These is for, as I've already said and forgotten, A2 card set. Would we call it A5? I think we'd call it A5 over here. Yeah. Decorative die as well as the card making die. So I'm assuming that's for the box. That looks simple enough, I suppose. And these are for the cards. Got a background die there. I'm, supposing you could, I'm assuming that you could use it with something like that. So you could have a you could have it cut out with a frame, and then you would just need to remove all of these parts. Quite an intricate die. So I should have a look into this, have a go at a card, and then come back when I've got it all figured out. Right, I've um, had a little bit of a mess around with this. I don't know if you can see, I'm absolutely covered in glue. So first of all, I'll show you my mistakes because there are always mistakes when I try something new. So there are two types of boxes you can make out of this. This is the first one with the, the flap at the top. But if you notice, if you have an opening in the middle, which I do think looks really nice, then you're going to see the flap through it. And um, there is another kind of box you can make if you want an aperture. <laughs> I made it upside down. Don't laugh. It's my first ever attempt at using acetate and that was supposed to be the lid, but never mind. So if you do have an opening on the lid, so if this box was the right way up, that would be on the top. And then you can make a box with a lid. So it's entirely up to you what you want to make. Just make sure you put the acetate on the top and not the bottom. So I'm going to show you how to make both kinds of boxes and I'm going to show you how to make one kind of card and then I do have a few thoughts about that which I'll share at the end. Um, I would love to know if you agree with me or not. Right, I'm just using some, some normal card stock. This, is, this was £6. It's 200 GSM for a pack of 100. So what you do is you take your box die, if you can see that. Now, if you do want an aperture in the centre, if you're making the second kind of box, you can use one of those dies. Or you can you can put the, the intricate die straight in there and it will cut out the aperture. That looks like this, which is really, really pretty. And I suppose you could even have acetate under there so everything stays sort of clean inside. So you can do that. I'm not going to. I'm just going to, I'm going to cut out four of these and then show you how to put the two boxes together because you need two pieces cut out for each box. So I'm going to run these through my die cutter and then I'll be back. Something I forgot to mention, for the box you will need a large size die cutting machine. I'm using my Sizzix Big Shot because it takes A4 size card. So you won't get away, I don't think, with your medium or smaller size um, die cutting machines. Right, that's done. I now have four pieces of card, two for each box. And you can't get away, when you're making boxes, sort of normal boxes like these, you can't get away without needing glue and scissors. But anyway, the first thing you have to do is fold and crease all of the score marks on both sides. Right. 
And now this is going to be the front, this is going to be the back. At this point it makes no difference. What we're going to do is cut off all of this top part. If you can see the score lines from the bottom of the flaps, right the way along there, that's all going to be cut off. Always fun. And these two flaps here. So this is what we are left with. It's going to be the top, that's going to be the bottom. So the first thing we need to do is glue that onto there. I'm going to use my Barely Art Pre Precision Craft Glue. It is fast drying, so I can't really linger. You can buy this with different size nozzles. You don't have to have the fine one on if you don't want. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Excellent glue, one of my favourites. So just make sure that you you put that on there just short of the score mark because it, it does need to fold over like that. Yeah, as long as that can fold, that's fine. And then this part here is going to come over. You turn that flap over and that's going to go onto there. Oh, I don't think I've turned that one over actually. So we put the glue on the inside because that's going to go over there like that. You might don't put it on the on the two outside tabs. We bring that over. If you can see what I'm doing, put it on like that. Just making sure that it's as accurate as possible. I don't know why that's gone like that. Right. This is very fast drying glue. <laughs> I think I've just managed to get that on there before I was in trouble. So, that's your box. So now this is going to be the top and this is going to be the bottom. So we want the bottom, the, the front of it to look really nice. So that's the part that's going to be um, glued down last. So it gives it a nice finish on the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, I'm going to fold that over and I'm going to put those flaps on there and then put the second one over like that. So in the inside, I know nobody will say the inside, but it, it's going to look nice and neat. That's just me. You don't have to do that if you don't want. So fold that over. Take that out of the way for a minute. Put some glue on there and on there. Fold that over on there. And then this is going to come over like that. So we'll put some glue on there. Oops. Don't worry, it'll all come together. Stick a little bit more on there. Right, and then that comes over like that. And just make sure that it's all as it should be. Could have perhaps put a little bit more glue on there. But you can do that to get it stuck. You can put your, a ruler or your bone folder in just to make sure it's all stuck properly. But I like doing like it like that because the flaps are hidden inside the box. And I just think it looks neater. And there's less chance of anything getting caught on it. When you, when you put something in there, there's less chance of it getting caught on the flaps because the, the flaps aren't there. And so then fold those over, bring that over, and you have a perfect little box. There you go. And if you notice, that's the front, and we've got that nice, neat edge at the front like that. Okay, the second one. Let me see if I can remember how to do this. So first of all, we fold both of the boxes over again in the exact same way. This is going to be the top. 
that's where I should have put my acetate in last time. So what we need to do on both of these parts is to cut off, see this top part here? There are two score lines, bends over like that. We're going to cut off just this top part on both of the, the sides. Yeah, that's not straight. It's never straight when I cut. Never mind. Right, so decide which is going to be the bottom of your box. So this is where I made the mistake the last time. This is going to be the box base. So this is the one I'm going to do first. And it's just put together like a normal box. Put those tabs in there like that. And we're going to sort of glue them together like that. If you want to, you can put a paper clip or a little peg or a little clamp on these just to, to get them to dry. But this is just for quickness. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my bone folder in there and just, just get the glue squished into those fibres there. And then we'll do the same at the other sides, these two uh, tabs. You might, if you're going to use this for quite a few cards, then I would put quite a bit of glue on, to be honest. And I would use wet glue. Right, now this is the part where you would cut out the center if you wanted to. You don't have to do that, obviously. But I think if you were going to do something like that or like that, then this is the type of box that you should be making. Because obviously, as I've said before, you get that, that uh, flap showing through there. So normally you would have to cut, to make a box lid, you would have to cut it slightly larger, but we're going to make it fit anyway. So we put it over like that and tuck at both sides, we're going to tuck in, let me see if I can get this right, we're going to tuck in the tabs, like that, and then the other side, tuck in the tabs, like that. And now we can stick the tabs down, so put glue on the tab, on your first set of tabs, put it in like that, and hold it down. And there is something I've forgotten to do, which I will show you in a little bit. That's looking nice and neat for a change. Yeah, so what I forgot to show you was to put a little hole in there so that you would end up with little notches on either side so you can just lift the box in and out and i've forgotten to do that one here i wonder if i can force it in now i'll have a go obviously if you were going to do this do this before you assemble the um the lid and measure it so you get it right in the center like that but anyway that I've, I've managed so now we can go to the other end. Do not put the glue on anywhere else but the flaps. A box will be well and truly stuck. So push those in, put that on there, and let it dry. Just make sure it's as accurate as you can get it. Uh oh, bit of a dent there, because I was a bit too Rampad just but this is quite thin card it, it's only 200 gsm that might sound a lot but it isn't 300 gsm would be fantastic for these boxes and look where i've put that it's no not even anywhere near the middle but anyway as i always say i'm just showing you the process for the purpose of this video so there you go now we should be able to 
take it off and then put it back on again with little to no difficulty. Yeah, there we go. So that's quite a tight box, that one. Right, now the card. I'm going to put this to one side for the moment. I haven't quite finished um, dealing with these yet. There is a die for cutting the card. Now, I don't know if you can see. I don't think you can because it's gone all... Hang on, let me bring the paper up. That might help with the focus. That's not helping, is it? Anyhow, there is a die for the card and it has cutting parts on three sides and none on that side. So what you do is you take your A4 sheet and you fold it in half or you can score it and fold it. It doesn't really matter. It just needs to be folded. And I'll give it a good crease. Right, there are a couple of different cards you can make with this. I'm just going to show you one. So this is the part that does not cut. So that needs to be put where the fold is. Now, I think you're supposed to put it on the edge like that. I put it so it's bumped up against the edge. This is trial and error. So if you were to do that, you would slide it along until it can't move any further that's where I would place the die and then just put it on just put on just put on a couple of bits of low tack tape just to stop it from moving right, that's moved hasn't it so I'm going to bump that up again and I'm going to put some more tape on That should stop it from moving around. Okay, now we're going to put that through my big shot and then I'll be back. Right, what do we have now? So now if you take off your tape, put that to one side for use later. Please be careful when you're taking it off because it can still damage your card. If you use low tack tape, you might want to dab it first on your clothes at a time or two, sort of like that, just to get rid of a little bit of the stickiness. But I've never really had any problems with this. So I'm just going to put all of this away and come back. Right, and that makes a perfect little card. And as you see, if we bring just one of the boxes over, they're both the same size, so it doesn't really matter. This card fits in there beautifully. And you would envelope would obviously be a bit larger. So there's plenty of room for the envelope as well. Now, my thoughts on this, for what they're worth, <laughs> is that doing it this way, you do get quite a bit of waste. Well, should I say scraps? Because it doesn't really get wasted, most of it. So you do end up with quite a substantial piece of scrap. Now, I found that if you take an A4 sheet of card I mean you obviously know this already and cut it in half and fold those two halves you're going to end up with more or less the same size and with no waste whatsoever and the tr trouble with that is that when you put it in the box yes it fits but you're not going to be able to fit a one with an envelope most likely so what you could do is perhaps cut off maybe a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch or something like that and then it would fit in and you'd be able to fit your envelopes and you'd have far less waste so even though this is very convenient and very accurate it does give you a perfect envelope the the die it depends on whether or not how much waste you want or how many scraps you want to produce to my way of thinking i would rather do my own cards using an A4 sheet folded in half, um, cut in half and then folded 
and then cut off a little bit at the bottom and that's the only waste that you're going to have but that's that's just my thoughts i won't be using the dye if i do use this but i i, I will definitely definitely use the box dye i think that is extremely useful bring these bits over again it's very very useful and if i had done that on this it would have given you a nice look on the front and of course the one which we will not speak about after this is of course you could have acetate on and you could have your cards in there so people could see exactly what they are i think that would be really good for craft fairs and things like that or for, for selling on your own website so if you wanted to make like a really big 3D card, you do get a lot of dies with this set. You could make a big 3D card and send it in the one box. You could make four or five cards, half a dozen cards, like thinner ones with envelopes and use the box to post them, to sell them. Especially if you use the, the 300 GSM card stock, you would get a really nice thick box. So that, those are my thoughts on the actual card making. I do think that this is overkill. There, there's too much waste doing it that way. I would rather just do it this way and just have a little bit of scrap from the bottom of the cards. But I'd be interested to know what you think, if you have any ideas of how this could be simplified or, or used in a way that's not going to produce as, as many scraps. I would be very interested to hear from you. So I am either going to go or I am going to make a card using all of the well some of the dies that came with this kit and i'll be back right i thought i wouldn't do a card this time i'll just showcase some of the dies instead um these few things were just made out of a small piece of scrap although i did get a little bit cocky <laughs> and there's a tiny little bit of the end not quite cut and there's far too much glue on it's all squeezed out but it's just to show that you, you can use your scraps. Don't throw your scraps away, especially the coloured ones. You can make some really nice things out of them. That one's just about had it now, I think. So I'll just, just show you a couple of the dies. This, uh, this is not a finished box. It's just to show you what some of the dies look like. So you get a sentiment and you get a background for it. You get these lovely little edge dies. And I think this is really cute. You get a little hinge die as well i think that would look lovely cut out in gold or bronze or like colored paper or something like that um but i'll just go through a few of the dies that you get so this is the sentiment in the background obviously that's the little hinge i just think that's really cute um what else did i use yeah that's the little that's for the little corner pieces that's turned those they turned out really nice you get some foliage, some flowers, another little, would you say that was for a corner? No. Yeah, I'll let you figure that one out. And you get some flowers as well. You get, I suppose you could use that for a sentiment. Yeah, and you get some really nice flowers and I guess you could use that for a sentiment as well. So all in all, even though I would never use the card die anymore. I will definitely, I think, be using the box dies and the decoration dies. I just think they are really, really nice. So, I mean, I suppose if you had, if you were making a card, you could even use that to go up the side. There's like a banner or a little ribbon or something. There's all sorts you can do. A little border die there. That's quite sweet. So I'm not sure if this has been of any interest to you, but if you struggle with card making like I do sometimes, then you've got something ready made right at your fingertips or something that you can make with minimal effort. Because although craft with crafting, you do get tools that can make your job a lot easier. There is still some work and a little bit of skill involved. So I think this is worth the money. In my opinion, it's worth the money. And I see if I can leave a link to it in the description um i don't know if you're interested in buying it or not but like i say there are more than one of these these sets so i'll see if i can actually find the website and link to them all so you can have a look at them for yourself but i'm not sure where you can buy them i can't even remember where i got this from it, it could have been amazon I'll, I'll have a look but anyway that's it just a little 
just a little demonstration of what you could do. You could make the box out of different coloured pattern paper and you could save these dies for in. You could have a matching box and a matching card or cards. Uh, so yeah, there you go. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye bye now.